Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to make this photo of Daniel Caesar a lot different using some elements that you can get from Adobe stock. So I'm going to be working with photos specifically for this. So as you can see in this photo, it looks kind of like dreamy because of the light in the back. I kind of wanted to add to that. So what I'm thinking is I can add some, you know, stock clouds, even more fog, you know, butterflies or something like that to enhance the environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my library right here. So if you don't see it, it should be under window and libraries. And right here, this is where my Adobe stock assets are going to appear. So right here, I'm going to search from uh, Adobe stock. So I'm going to search up clouds. So I'm going to try to find a PNG version because I want it to kind of like hover in the air. So you can see like a couple of these are PNGs right here. So you want to press save preview to download. And so you actually get to see how it looks like on, you know, your image before you have to purchase it or anything like that or buy a license. So if you just drag it on here, you can see how it looks like. So I actually haven't found one just through these previews right here. So you can press search more results on the web. And so it will open up a new tab right here. And so I found her right here. It looks pretty good, you know, and then you can just press open preview in Photoshop if you're signed in on Adobe stock on your browser and then you can open it up. And then it'll basically save this particular image in the Adobe stock um, library right here. So right here, if you go under your downloads, it should be here and you can just right click and press license image if you don't want the whole, um, you know, watermark here. And so basically anything you do on the browser will sync into the, you know, the application, whether this is Photoshop or Premiere Pro or any other Adobe application. And so this is actually an AI file. So I would have to open it up in Illustrator in order to like remove the background. As you can see, it's checkered, but it's not actually transparent. So right here I have it open. So how you do this is you just go in Creative Cloud and you just double click on the the thing right there. And so now I can just copy the cloud and not the background as well. You can just copy the cloud. So press control C, go back here and press control V and paste as pixels. And then there's the clouds. There's actually a moon behind it, I think, which I didn't see initially, but that looks cool too. So I'm going to just place it here, press control T, hold shift to keep the aspect ratio and to transform it. We're going to press control J to duplicate. I'm going to place it top right here and just make smaller versions of it. Just place it random places and to make it look more realistic as if it's actually in the photo, what you could do is you can go to filter blur and either use mo uh, motion blur or radio blur. Not only will this kind of create like some sort of motion in the photo, but I'll kind of blend in the rough edges that don't fit. So if you do motion blur right here, you can see what it does. So I'm actually going to do that to all of them. I'm just going to press motion blur here, filter, motion blur, filter, motion blur. And you can even do it to the image. So you can do filter, blur, radio blur. And so it adds to the blur and the motion. So I'm actually going to duplicate this. So press control J and I'm going to apply the blur to the top um, layer right here so that I can erase any of the blur that I don't want there later on. So radial blur right here. Let's just make it extreme amount like 60 or something and make sure it's zoom. So it goes inwards and not like a circular motion that spin would do. It's going to apply the blur so you can see what that did. So uh, we're going to use the eraser tool, use the soft brush right here where there's zero hardness and we're just going to make the brush a little bit bigger and just erase the middle portion where uh, Daniel Caesar is. What I'll do actually is I'll place some over the blur and some underneath. So let's just place this one over this one over lower the opacity of this one, something like that. And there's still one underneath and it's kind of there. So right here we have a fairly good image it already changed a lot from the beginning. So if you just want to see the before and after you can group everything that you kind of added. So all the, you know, Adobe stock um, footage and you can just hide it so you can see what that did. You can even lower the opacity if you don't want the effect to be too dramatic. I might lower this a little bit actually because it looks a bit too strong. Next thing we're going to do is add butterflies as I mentioned before. So we just want to go to libraries and then we're going to search up for butterflies. And yeah, so butterfly. So I'm going to add a monarch butterfly because they're orange and it kind of fits the yellow tint. And so we're going to click on it right here and click save previews to download. And then we can kind of see how it looks like and it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to right click, press license image, and then it's going to license. So press okay. 
and this one's actually a JPEG so we could just remove the background or we can just find a PNG version but because we already licensed it I'll just use the background er eraser tool right here to delete it now we're gonna press Control T, hold Shift and drag. We're gonna make a very big butterfly right here. So similar placement to where the clouds are and the same like proportions. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer again. So press Control J and then hold Shift and drag. We're gonna add some in the empty spaces right here. Maybe rotate it so it isn't like exactly the same. And do another one. Maybe put this further behind him or something like there, maybe bigger. And now we can do the same thing we did with the other clouds and add motion blur. So we can do blur, motion blur, like that. And then there you go. And now I think we're done in terms of adding, you know, the stock photos and stuff like that. Now we can just do the color grading. What I would recommend is color correct each image individually and then do it as a whole. So basically, the purpose of doing it individually is so that it matches the colors of the other images. And then later on, you can just color grade um, the entire image. So I'm going to do that with this. So you're going to want to make a clipping mask because you're going to be applying it to one thing only. So for color balance for like the first butterfly, which is the smaller one, um, you want to right click and press create clipping mask and then you can just change it. So I'm going to move the yellow all the way left. So it kind of matches the background and you can just duplicate this a bunch of times and apply it to the different butterflies. The clouds here, you can do the same thing. I'm not sure orange would be a good look. I think maybe lowering the saturation would be better because it looks kind of, you know, the blue is too visible. So we're going to instead lower the vibrance. So there's no blue at all. And there you go. We're going to do the same thing with this one. And so there we go. And now we're going to color grade the entire image. So we're going to go to a color balance. We can go either way. It doesn't have to be yellow anymore because all the images are like the same color. So we can go like purple or green. I think toward the right here looks better. I think this looks better too. And so there we go. And so if we just hide this group right here which is all the stock images you can see what that does and yeah that's about it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed tune in tomorrow for another video